Hey everyone, NFI Hammer here. In today's video, I will be painting the March 2024 model of the month, a Tyranid Neurogaunt. I'm super excited to do this. I haven't really been painting many of my Tyranids. So let's see how it turns out. Let's get started. So if you've managed to go down to the Games Workshop store after the 2nd of March, you can get one of these cool little miniatures, which is these Neurogaunts. Or if you're really lucky, 1 in 10 people will get like the Control Node Neurogaunt. So if you're not familiar with the miniature of the month, you just go to a Games Workshop store and you speak to them, and if they've got stocks, they'll hand over a free miniature that you build in store and you take home with you. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go to the store, um, but I did manage to get a Leviathan box, and so that's what I'll be building today. So you would have seen this sprue before when you're in store collecting a free one, or if you've got a Leviathan box like I do, or you've just bought the Neurogaunt separately. And what I was surprised with was how easy they were to put together. My last video I did with miniatures was the Necron flayed ones and they were absolutely insane and so difficult to put together. There was 10 pieces per model on average, whereas these little guys are just two pieces you click together, um, just push pin, no glue, anything required and you're good to go. And the control node Neurogaunt, he was a little bit more complex with four, but they're super simple to put together. I absolutely recommend these for beginners. They're super easy and you can't even see like the little seams when you've pushed them together. So they've done a really good job of hiding all of that messiness and there really wasn't many mold lines or anything to clean up as well. So super recommend these models. I'm just using a Rust-Oleum flat white primer that you can get from Bunnings or any hardware store. And I did a whole video comparing using just a basic primer and wraithbone primer and from my experimentation as a beginner you know i really didn't see any difference between the two i'm not sure I, I feel like i put way too much spray paint as you can tell from this video so let me know how you use the rattle cans if there's any tips or anything i feel like if i don't do it enough um, there's gaps in coverage so what i do now is i use the wraithbone uh, which is kind of a bone color white and a makeup brush I stole from my wife. And I just go over the whole model, just working in all the details, making sure that the paint um, is pretty thin. They can get a bit tricky. The paint gets too thick and you lose a little bit of the detail of the miniature. So I just keep moving the brush around and making sure that any um, built up paint is kind of spread. I did find it was quite tricky to get to the underside of the model with the base there, um, so it does take a few goes. And then I've got my trusty Abaddon Black here, and I'm just going to go paint in all of like the claws and the hooves. So the model that I kind of use in my head when I'm painting is I try and create a you know color scheme based on the individual material. So. If it's like a claw or like um, chitlin kind of uh, material, I paint that black. If it's hard armor painting, I paint it purple and so forth. And I find that for myself, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what color to paint things. But I also feel like it makes the model more coherent in the fantasy setting that it's in if things all have like a purpose and a design. Especially with, you know, Tyranids that are kind of organisms that are designed purely for killing. Um, it kind of makes sense that things would be efficient and streamlined. So this is the colour, the Phoenician purple, that I use to demonstrate kind of like the armour plating of Tyranids. So this is where they're expecting bullets or other sort of, you know, weapons to kind of hit them. So they've got to be kind of tough. Interestingly though, the panels on the side aren't the same kind of armoured material, so I've left them alone. But I did find some purple on the front of the model. And this model is really interesting in that it doesn't have any eyes. Like there's no... I don't know how this model is intended to see. Maybe it's a pheromone thing or something. Um, so I'm just doing the knee pads here. 
as well but this is another reason why I'd recommend this for beginners is that eyes are very difficult to paint or at least I really struggle with them if you have any you know tips or advice let me know in the comments below but I am terrified of painting eyes and the fact that this model doesn't have any just makes it super amazing for beginners like myself to paint. So those side panels that I mentioned before, I'm trying something different and using Doomfire Magenta Contrast Paint watered down to do the side panels. I ended up watering it down far too much and actually having to go back a few times. So I don't know if watering down was necessary, or at least probably wasn't for me, but I just thought this is a different kind of color and it's sort of a different type of material. And they also have these, um, three panels at the back that I was going to paint this color as well. You know, I'm not really sure if I love this color scheme. This is just what I had and went with it. Um, maybe if I could have my time back again, I would pick something different. But, you know, you just lesson in learning and making mistakes. So for the actual skin color, I'm using Gullum and Flesh. Um, and I'm just kind of going over all these areas. Again, I've watered it down and it's kind of pooling into the recesses. So it kind of creates that shadow effect, which is pretty cool. If you look at my video for Termagants, I do a bit more of a pinky purple flesh. Um, but with this one, I'm kind of going for a darker sort of leathery look. And there's also this gap in the face where, uh, you know, there's a little bit of skin. So I tried to get it in there. But I'm also trying the Drucci Violet shade, and I'm just kind of going over that. I watched a video that was saying that shades are kind of like filters, so that, you know, it kind of very subtly applies like a color filter over it. And I find that the purple wash kind of brings the model a little bit more cohesive together because of the purple um, on the top. And I also just noticed when I was painting that there's this little armor kind of diamond on the center of the chest so I'm just kind of painting that purple as well but honestly it's so small you probably don't even need to worry about it at all um, but that's just what I like about Games Workshop miniatures is there's just so many you know details to it so now I'm going back to that Wraithbone color that I started with and I'm trying to paint in the teeth so this Neurogaunt is the control node one which is why it has that big brain but it's actually the only one I noticed that has this closed mouth and it makes it really difficult to paint the teeth. Um, but I'm also using it while I've got the paint out just to like fix up any mistakes that I've made in the brain area because I've got a bit of purple in there or a little bit of that um, contrast red paint in there. Just trying to clean up it for the next step. But yeah, I found the mouth was quite difficult. In hindsight, I probably would have painted it black first and then just touched the teeth up in white. I only have one blue color, Macrag Blue, which came with the paint tool set. So I've just watered that down so that it's pretty much just a shade at this point. And I'm using a really, it's probably too big a brush, <laughs> um, but I'm just going over the brain and just painting in very gently the areas there and because the models have those natural brain grooves i don't know what the science term is uh the water's kind of just pooling in there which is creating that nice dark blue lines and then the top is really just getting a little bit of blue paint um, but that's kind of creating that um, light blue to dark blue color gradient so it, something was missing for me. So I got the Fire Dragon Bright, which I used in the Termagants um, kind of like gills. And I'm painting these little kind of, I guess they're like spine things. I'm not really quite sure, but the things that connect the, the brain to the body. And then just painting them um, this bright orange color. And I wasn't really sure how it was gonna turn out, but I actually think that it really brings the whole thing together. So I'd really recommend trying to just paint these little things. You know, you don't have to paint them orange, but I find that by painting them a different color really helps 
the cohesion of the model and you know I just look 10 times better from like this really quick um, addition so with the Phoenician purple I get the Jean Steeler purple which is a lighter shade and I try and do this feathering technique where you know maybe like 30% of the last armor blade I paint it that purple color and repeat that for each you know um, armor chunk and so this is I think a technique called feathering and I'm not doing a very good job here as you can tell um, because this model was kind of tricky to work out where the blade stopped and started but you, the good thing is it's biological material so you don't have to be perfect you can make mistakes and it kind of works because it's an organic being um, so it kind of looks a bit weird at the moment so I'm doing the uh, knee pads as well and trying to get to that underneath diamond so at this point you might start panicking and being like I've completely messed it up or at least that's kind of what I feel like when I get to this point um, but you just have to have faith in the process so the next color is the Chala Lilac and this is a very light purple. So what you wanna do here is just in the last five to 10% of each armor blade, do exactly what you did before, but just with this lighter color. And what it does is it creates that three tone of the three different purples and creates kind of an organic chitlin kind of effect where the armor, um, you know, kind of has naturally aged and weathered. And this is like an alternative to edge highlighting that because I personally suck at edge highlighting so I find this is much easier. One thing I did notice is like where the black and the um, Gulliman's flesh color kind of joined it looked a bit abrupt so I've been trying to do this technique and I'm not really happy with it but you know using this Doomfire Magenta to kind of make it like the skin is raw where the nails have just kind of emerged out of. I don't know if I'm conveying it very well, um, but I find that it's kind of better than just having a solid transition. And then finally to kind of finish off the model, I've got this Dark Reaper colored grayish paint and I never really find a use for it. So I'm actually using it now to kind of just edge highlight the hooves and the claws. And I find that, you know, it's a really subtle effect, um, but it really makes them kind of pop a little bit more. I think when they're too black like that, you lose a lot of the definition and the shape of it. So um, this was quite an easy step, but recommended. I did really enjoy how this model came together. It certainly wasn't what I envisioned in my head, but nonetheless, it kind of worked in the end. The skin was definitely, you know, not the pinky flesh that I thought it was going to be. You know, the pink scales weren't what I expected, but I really like the contrast paint here. It does a really good job of like, you know, doing all those like shadows and highlights for you. I like the blue brain. I can't believe it kind of worked. It's exactly what I was going for and I only had one colored paint to do it. You know, the base definitely needs some more work. I haven't really decided how I'm going to base it, but I really want to do a forest theme. So if you have any ideas on how to do forest bases, please let me know down in the comments below. If you did like the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and it's very appreciated. And if you do leave a comment, I make sure to respond to every single one. But anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.